Hey there, this is Mr. Alexander, and today I'm going to talk about solving systems of linear inequalities by graphing. And this is what we did in pre-AP Algebra 2 at Stony Point High School on Friday, September 26th, and Monday, September the 29th. So I thought I'd quickly walk you through how to do some of these. Um, you probably remember uh, this problem says review graph each in inequality what are the solutions the reason this says review is because this is what we were doing on Khan Academy not too long ago so hopefully you recognize that and hopefully you've been keeping up with your Khan Academy uh, so let's talk about number two here zoom in and it says okay we're supposed to graph it and it says, what are the solutions? So the first thing I like to do with these is I like to solve them for y, meaning I like to get y by itself. So I've got 4x minus 3y is greater than or equal to 18. First thing I want to do, subtract 4x, because I'm trying to get the y by itself. I'm trying to isolate the y. So I've got negative 3y is greater than or equal to negative 4x plus 18. Now you might be asking why did I put the negative 4x over there on the left? Why didn't I put it, why didn't I write 18 minus 4x? Well I'm trying to get this into slope intercept form and in slope intercept form usually we've got the x on the left and the constant on the right. Okay, the y is not by itself. The last thing I need to do is divide by negative 3 to everything. Divide everything by negative 3. Alright, so these cancel out. I've got a y. Oh, but don't forget, when you multiply or divide by a negative, you got to flip the inequality. So y is less than or equal to, negatives cancel out, 4 over 3x, then 18 divided by negative 3 is negative 6, or just minus 6. So I've got an inequality here that I can graph. You should always start with the y-intercept. Start with that negative 6 and put that, mark the y-intercept. Now your slope is right here in front of the x because this is slope-intercept form, slope-intercept. So this means go up 4, go up 4, and then over 3. So up 1, 2, 3, 4, over 1, 2, 3. Up 1, 2, 3, 4, over 1, 2, 3. Now we can draw on this line, but the next thing you got to ask yourself, is this a solid line? or a dotted line. And your hint is right here. When that little bar over there, that or equal to bar, that's a solid line. If that bar was not there, I'd be drawing in a dotted line. But it's there, so I'm going to draw a solid line as straight as I can. Hopefully you can draw a little bit straight. Okay, last part. It says, where do I shade the area? Less than. Less than is the area below. So. Okay. The last part of this question was, what are the solutions? You can't see all of it, but it says, what are the solutions? Well, the solutions are, is every single point inside of this shaded area, including the line. So all these points on the line, that's included in the solution. All right. So that's review. What's the new stuff? Let's look at number four here. It says, graph each system of inequalities and determine whether the point, this point, is in the solution set. That's what it says there. If you're looking for these notes, go get them from your teacher. Or you can print them off the calendar. The calendar has a PDF document link for every single one of these. You can get the attachment. You can print it right off at home if you prefer. All right, so I've got two equations now. And I'm supposed to graph them and shade the appropriate area. So. I'm looking at this 2x minus 3y is greater than or equal to 6. And again, this is not in slope intercept form, and which is, makes it a little bit harder to graph. So I want to graph it, and I'm going to put it in slope intercept form. First thing, subtract 2x from both sides. So those 2x's go away, and I'm left with negative 3y is greater than or equal to and again, I'm going to put the negative 2x first to get it in the right format for slope-intercept form. <laughs> again, the y is not by itself. Uh, 
path, so I need to divide everything by negative 3. And I do mean everything, all the numbers anyway. So those negatives are going to cancel out, the negative 3s, leaving us only with y. And we divide it by a negative. Anytime you multiply or divide by a negative, flip the inequality. So now it says y is less than or equal to 2 over 3x minus 2. So I can graph that. Start with the y-intercept, negative 2. And go up to 1, 2, over 1, 2, 3. Down to 1, 2, over 1, 2, 3. The way I know whether to go left or right when I'm plotting these points is the slope is positive. And a positive slope always slopes upward from left to right. That's how I know which direction to put these points. It needs to go upward from left to right. And again, this is going to be a solid line because it's got the equal to sign there. So I'm going to go ahead and draw and draw a straight line. All right, so now I've got, uh, I've got to shade it. And it says y is less than. For this part, I'm going to grab a pencil. And I'm going to shade the area beneath. Okay. Now the last part of this is the line y is greater than or equal to 4. Negative 4, sorry. Now the line y, equal, y is greater than or equal to negative 4, that's a straight line. And it's a straight vertical line. All these lines, all these I'm sorry, a straight horizontal line. All these horizontal lines are always of the form y equals. So y equals negative 4, put a point at negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And just put in a straight horizontal line. And it's a solid line because it says greater than or equal to. And I'm going to shade the area above because it's y is greater than. So shade the area above. So the question is, which region did I shade twice? I'm going to do that with a pen. I'm going to make it dark. The area that I shaded twice is right here. That's the solution set. The area that you shade twice is the solution set. Or if there's three equations, it's the area that you shade three times. OK? So this, the dark part, is the solution set. So is that point? 1, 3 in the solution set? No, it only satisfies that equation. It doesn't satisfy both equations. The answer is no, it's not in the solution set. This point is not in the solution set. All right. So this is, uh, that's two equations. Let's see if we can do one to three equations now. Let's do number six here. It looks challenging. Let's try that one. Because now we've got two equations that are not in y equals form. So I'm going to have to solve both of these equations, put them both into y, into slope intercept form. So I've got this 2x plus 2y is less than or equal to 4. I'm going to subtract 2x minus 2x minus 2x to get 2y is less than or equal to negative 2x plus 4. I'm running out of space, so I'm just going to divide by 2 to get y is less than or equal to negative x plus 2. And I didn't flip the sign because I only divided by a positive number. If I would have divided by a negative number, I would have flipped the sign. But I didn't, so I won't. All right, this equation, number 2. This negative 2y less than or equal to 6 minus 3x. The first thing I'm going to do is rearrange these terms because I like the, the x to be first. And I'm allowed to do that. Negative 3x plus 6. As long as the number keeps the right sign in front, you can do that. So I'm going to divide everything by negative 2. And when I divide by a negative, to get rid of this negative 2, I've got to flip the sign. And negative 3 divided by negative 2 is just 3 over 2x 
6 divided by negative 2 is minus 3. All right, so I'm going to graph these 1, 2, 3 equations. Let's do number 1 first. That was 1 over here. 1, 2. Uh, y is less than or equal to negative x plus 2. So plus 2, negative x is up 1 to the left 1. Up 1 to the left 1. Up 1 to the left 1. And these are going to be solid lines because there's that less than or equal to right there. So that's a solid line. And it's everything below it. So I'm going to use my pencil to lightly shade it. Lightly shade everything with my pencil. All the stuff below that line. Okay, this other line, this 3 over 2x minus 3, minus 3, 1, 2, 3, and then it's 3 over 2, up 1, 2, 3, over 1, 2, it's that same point, up 1, 2, 3, over 1, 2, and it's a solid line. So I'm going to make a solid line, and I'm going to try and shade everything above it, because it's why it's greater than. So, so far I've shaded this region twice. We've got one more equation. This x is greater than or equal to negative 2. x equals negative 2 is the straight or uh, vertical line at negative 2. So there's negative 2, and you just draw a vertical line. And it's a solid line because it's greater than or equal to. So it's just straight up and down. And it's every x, all the x's that are greater than that. So it's everything to the right. So the question is, which area did I shade three times? What's well, this triangle looking thing in the middle? So that's the solution set. The question is, is this point in the solution set? So over one, two, three over one, no, it's just outside the solution set. So that's a no. That's not in the solution set. All right, so that's how you do inequalities. And the last thing I want to talk about uh, is this word problem here. Now I'm not going to graph this one for you, but I am going to help you write the inequality. And that's it, and then you'll have to graph it. I've already shown you how to graph it once you've got the inequality. So let's talk about how to write the inequality, though. Carol's math club, you all are in a math club, right? Yeah, okay. Carol's math club wanted to make t-shirts to sell. They knew they could sell at least, at most, 50 shirts. The cost of yellow shirts was $3 each, and the cost of blue shirts was $8 each. The club had $240 to spend. What system of inequalities could, be, could the club use to determine how many yellow shirts and how many blue shirts they can order? So we're supposed to write two systems here, or a system with two equations, I'm sorry. They knew that they could sell at most 50 shirts. The first thing I like to do is define my x and my y. Let's say that x are the blue shirts. And y is the yellow shirts. And I knew at most they could sell was the most that they could sell was 50 shirts. So x plus y, that's all the shirts, all of them, has to be less than or equal to 50, because they could sell 49, but they can't sell 51. Also, I know how much they cost. The cost of a yellow shirt is 3, and the cost of a blue shirt was 8. So 8 times the number of blue shirts plus 3 times the number of yellow shirts has to be less than or equal to the amount they can spend, which is $240. So now we've got two equations. Eight times the number of shirts is the price, the total number, the total price for the shirts that they have to spend. Three times the yellow is how much they have to spend on yellow shirts. Now you can go ahead and solve it, these both for y, graph them, and then answer the question. You should know how to do that based on what we've done so far. Uh, so that's it. That should help you with linear inequalities. Um, as always, thank you for watching, and good luck.